163 countries, more than 10,000 deaths, 247,000 active cases. The Wuhan coronavirus is the worst pandemic of modern times. It's spreading like wildfire. So is an equally fierce debate over its name, the Chinese virus. Our recent descriptions about the origins have led to complaints. We are being told that there should be no space for labels at a time like this. But to anyone remotely interested in media transparency, I speak to you, there needs to be some accountability before it gets too late. Tonight, we are naming names and calling a spade a spade. This is a made in China virus. This is a Chinese virus. And let me make this very clear. This is not a cultural tag. We are not trying to scapegoat an entire ethnicity or nationality here. Calling it Chinese is accurate. We are only trying to counterway the Chinese regime's efforts to shift the blame, to evade responsibility. Beijing is trying to sow confusion about where this virus came from and how its negligence triggered a pandemic. China must bear the responsibility for hiding the truth. The truth about its origin. The Hunan seafood market in Wuhan, a wet market with animals hoarded in unnatural conditions. The truth about Beijing's culpability, how the Chinese regime tried to silence a doctor who raised an alarm about this virus, Dr. Li Wenliang. He later died of the virus. And now China has admitted that he was wrongly targeted and harassed by the government. The truth about China's negligence. It let 5 million people leave Hubei, the province which soon became the epicenter. It lied to the WHO about human-to-human -human transmission of this virus and the truth about the censorship. China kept word about this virus from spreading. Countless reports will tell you how China paid journalists to control the information about this outbreak. This is a Chinese virus. China origin, China made. In calling this term politically incorrect, one will have to start rewriting history because viruses have a history of being named on their places of origin. I'm sure you've heard of the MERS illness. Have you ever wondered what the acronym stands for, MERS, M-E-R-S? It's the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Why? Because all cases linked to the Arabian Peninsula uh, were linked to the Arabian Peninsula when health officials first detected this disease in 2012. Why have they branded an entire region? Critics must ask now. Or take the example of the Japanese encephalitis, a mosquito-borne virus. Why Japanese? Because the first case was documented in Japan way back in 1871. To this day, the World Health Organization calls it by this name, Japanese. The Zika virus. Place of origin? The Zika forest of Uganda. The Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Place of origin? The Rocky Mountains of North America. The Ebola virus named after a river in Congo located near the first identified outbreak site, Ebola. I can give you more examples, but it's easier to describe what viruses and diseases should be called than to bear responsibility for the crises they trigger. And this is what the WHO and China are doing. Calling it COVID-19 is like naming a baby born in 2019. Given that another might be born in 2021 or 22, God forbid. Such nomenclature gives China an escape route. And in naming it such, COVID-19, the world is letting China reshape the coronavirus narrative and dispute the virus's origin. The novel coronavirus is not so novel anymore. The virus has multiplied. It has spread across the world. It knows no borders. If we continue to buy Chinese propaganda and follow what is acceptable to China, we must also prepare for another China-made pandemic. I'm not. So on this show, we shall continue calling it the Chinese virus.